Hey everybody, I'm Tom Volk, producer of the Driven Car Review series on YouTube and contributor to the New York Times. Today I'm with Sherry Willey, Director of Product Management at Qualcomm. Now, 5G in the car is not just a 5G smartphone in the car, it's actually embedded in the car. What makes that better? Right, so, so yes, that's right. We're talking here about 5G, which is built in at the factory by the car maker. And what that brings to the car is a system which is purposely designed to work with that uh -huh. exact vehicle. Right. And it will bring these higher data rates for better user experiences to all of those screens that you see in the cars nowadays, yeah. as well as other use cases that will make the vehicle safer and give it more options to communicate with its surroundings. Yeah, so 5G in a smartphone allows you to do things like download cat videos faster. But what is it going to do to improve the car experience? So there's a couple of ways that the car experience will change. So you could certainly download cat videos if that was something you wanted awesome. to do. Yeah. Um, as if you can imagine the passenger or your kids in the back seat, streaming content, playing games, you know, all of these kinds of entertainment that we're used to on the little screens on our phones, you can have those experiences in the car. But then also with the driver, there's uh, the ability to get more navigation data more quickly, as well as the vehicle interacting with its environment, communicating with other vehicles, and bringing in this new universe of interchanges with the outside world as well as inside the car itself. So nowadays cars are stuffed with safety features like crumple zones and airbags and automatic emergency braking. What is 5G going to do, if anything, to help safety? So 5G can bring a complementary technology to all of those safety features in the vehicle. So 5G has the capability to communicate with vehicles. Oh. We call this cellular vehicle to everything. So this allows cars to communicate with their surroundings. And what this does is this provides a complementary system that enhances those other safety features, crumple zones, lane keeping, automatic braking, with information that can be received beyond the site that the driver can see or beyond the hearing distance of where you could hear an ambulance coming. And it can provide an enhancement to the way that the car understands its surroundings. Okay, so the way I envision it is if there's a car a mile ahead that hits a patch of ice and the automatic emergency braking stuff uh, says, oh, it's activated and, or say there's a rain squall, windshield wipers go on it will tell everybody in that area that there's a hazard. Is right. that correct? Exactly, those are great examples. There can also be examples, for instance, of understanding the, if the lanes have shifted due to construction, right? Um, if there's a, an ambulance coming through the intersection, they can advance, provide advanced warning of their approach, again, before you would be able to hear the sirens or, right. or see the flashing lights. Sure. So everybody wants the autonomous car. Um, what is 5G going to do to make that happen, if anything? Well, 5G will be a key enabler for uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh -huh. And this, this happens in a couple of ways. So first off, the vehicle itself needs to be able to understand its surroundings, to understand what kind of environment it's driving in, and so this is where the technologies of the communication with the network, communication with other vehicles, mm -hmm. mapping data can feed into the car to give it that data set. In addition, 5G will also complement the other sensors in the car and the detection of the other vehicles around the car to understand uh -huh. intent, who's going to change lanes in front of you, who's speeding up, who's slowing down. So that communication with the network and, and with the environment uh -huh. makes the, the car able to be part of a bigger landscape and interact with that landscape. And the 5G connection is the key 
pipeline that transfer that can exchange all that data with the outside environment. Okay, so it seems like 5G is going to be great inside the car, but what's going to do outside the car? Is it going to tie vehicles together? What's happening there? Sure. So in addition to the opportunity for vehicles to communicate amongst themselves, there's also a potential for a new smart transportation landscape. So this opens up new business models and opportunities around coordinating how the routes that, that vehicles drive, right? Communicating with roadways to understand where there's congestion, to uh, manage self-parking and the, kind of those sort of valet applications. And this is even before we get into extended applications like ride sharing, uh, insurance that is optimized based on how you drive or how you use your car. Yeah, well, it allows, say, very close together a caravanning Absolutely. of vehicles, so Absolutely. which reduces wind resistance, which improves fuel economy Absolutely. and emissions. Absolutely, and especially for uh, examples like long haul trucking, where you're, you know, you're sending many transport trucks down a long highway. And that's a, a perfect example where you may need fewer drivers or less fuel. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, the possibilities um, really start to open up once you let your imagination start to wander a little bit. Yeah. What are the challenges of implementing 5G? Are there any um, other than we need to get them into more and more mm -hmm, vehicles? Mm -hmm. So 5G is a complex technology. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of advancements, a lot of study that the car makers and their suppliers have to bring to understand where to place the antennas on their vehicle, how to make sure that there is good coverage uh, inside yeah. the vehicle for your, you know, for your Bluetooth, for your Wi-Fi that's in the cabin, the 5G connecting to the cellular network, the vehicle to vehicle to other other cars. Yeah. So there's a lot of technical uh, challenges that the car makers need to solve, and also just leveraging the networks, making sure that the networks themselves provide good coverage in rural areas, that you're, they're giving the capacity to all of these additional users. We're seeing a very, very strong adoption of 5G in automotive. Oh, really? In fact, we're seeing a faster adoption of 5G than we saw several years ago when 4G started to be introduced. So the big difference between a phone and a car is if you drop a signal with your phone, it's kind of an inconvenience, mm -hmm. but it could be pretty serious mm -hmm. if you drop the signal in the car. How do you make sure that that's all very, very robust? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's two aspects of that. So in terms of the safety to the driver and the passengers of the vehicle, oh. all of the systems in the vehicle are designed to be fail safe so that your life won't be in danger if you're in a dead spot in the network. Right? You'll fall back to the existing safety systems in the car, your seat belts, your airbags, and so on. Yeah. So it's, it's intentionally designed that way. But with respect to the data security, which is another kind of security which everyone is concerned about these days, 5G is leveraging all of the latest technology with the cellular standards, which are inherently designed to be secure for all of the personal privacy and... Uh, resistance to being hacked and these kinds of things that sure. also apply to your smartphone. Security, very important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, Sherry Willey with Qualcomm. And if you want to know more about 5G in automotive, go to Qualcomm.com. I'm Tom Volk. Thanks for watching.